In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own customizable meshes in Blender. Having a customizable mesh will allow you to make a bunch of different variations of a mesh, or even animate it. I've used this method to create customizable characters, but you can also use this for props like furniture or weapons. By the end of the video, you should have your own custom rig, and you can use the same techniques to control the shape of any model in Blender. Let's start off by adding Suzanne to our scene. You can press Ctrl-2 to add a subsurf modifier, and shade it smooth to make things look nicer. Now we need to make some shape keys. If you've never used them before, shape keys are a way of storing the position of the vertices of your mesh, and we can then use a slider to move the vertices from their original position to the new position. We need to make some shape keys, so we're going to change the size of the eyes and nose, the position of the mouth, and the angle of the ears. In the Data tab, add two shape keys, the first being the Basis shape key, and turn the second one up to one. You could rename this Eyes Big. All we have to do is select the eyes and scale them up. You can enable the x-axis mirror and proportional editing to make modeling easier. Now create another shape key called Eyes Small. Turn down the first shape key to zero so we go back to the original mesh. All of the changes that we make should be using the original mesh. If you forget to turn off a shape key, some of the new ones might look incorrect. So all we have to do here is scale down the eyes, making them as small as you want. All of these shape keys are going to be the extreme poses, so these two shape keys will define how big or small the eyes can get. So exaggerate them as much as possible without completely breaking the mesh, because then we'll have more range to play with. Next we're going to make two shape keys for the position of the mouth, called Mouth Up and Mouth Down. And all we're going to do with these is move the mouth up towards the nose, and then move it down. Repeat the same process for the scale of the nose, calling these Nose Small and Nose Big. Just scaling the nose as much as you can, and finally we're going to do one shape key for the rotation of the ears, and you can call this one Ear Angle. All we have to do with this is select the ear and rotate it downwards. If you turn this key up and down, you'll see that the ear seems to shrink in the middle position, and this is because shape keys are linear. They try to move from position A to position B along a straight line. They don't know that we want the ear to rotate along a curve. All they know is that they have a start position and end position and move directly between them. So that's something to keep in mind with shape keys. You can get away with some rotation, but any extreme rotations will end up looking strange because of this linear blending. You should now have some shape keys that look roughly like this. Take your time with these, making sure to name them correctly and to check that they all work as expected before we go on to the rigging. If all of your shape keys work, then it's time to make our rig. Just briefly, I'll explain how the rig works because we'll be using something called drivers. Drivers allow us to control the value of certain parameters in Blender using another value. So in this example, I've set up a cube, and the location of the cube is driving the scale of this torus. At a position of 0, our torus is scaled to 1 as normal, but when we move the cube, we see it change scale. You can also use the same driver for multiple values, so now the location of the cube also affects the rotation. And it's not just the location, we can use any value to drive another value. Like right here, as I change the camera resolution, it changes the location, rotation, and scale of different objects in the scene. It's not a very practical example, but drivers can be used in any number of different ways. The way to see if a value can be used as a driver is by right-clicking on it. If you see the option Copy as New Driver, you can then use this to control other values in the scene. And to find a value that can be controlled, again you right-click, and if it has the option Paste Driver, then it can be controlled using drivers. With that out of the way, let's finally make our rig. We're going to keep it simple by just making a slider-based rig like a character creator in a game. Add a single bone to your scene and move this above Suzanne. Let's head into pose mode and have a look at the position of the bone. Let's move it back and forth to figure out roughly how far we want our bone to move. Luckily for us, a max value of 1 and min value of minus 1 works perfectly, so all we have to do is right-click the X position and copy it as a new driver. Back in object mode, select Suzanne and paste this into your first shape key. The shape key will turn purple, and that's how you know it's being controlled by another value. Now in pose mode, when you move the bone to the right, it will activate the shape key. The driver is still copied, so we can also paste it into our small shape key as well. We checked the values earlier, and we want the small shape key to be activated when we reach minus 1, not 1, so we need to change this using the driver editor. Expand the bottom window and change it to the driver editor. In object mode, select Suzanne and you should see your drivers on the left. You'll see some diagonal lines, but to zoom in while hovering your mouse over the graph, press A to select everything, and then press numpad period to frame selected. You can also hold control and use the middle mouse button to navigate this window. These diagonal lines are your drivers, and they always start off with two points, one at 0, 0 and the other at 1, 1, which you can see in the F-curve tab on the right. On the left, you can hide the first shape key using the eye icon. This window can get messy, so it's easier to only look at one value at a time. 
Now we can see our two points, so select the top one, and on the right-hand side in the F-curve tab, instead of a keyframe value of 1, we can change this to minus 1, and the diagonal line will flip. Now if we go back to pose mode, when we move our bone, the two shape keys should work correctly. So really pay attention to the values of your drivers. We're fortunate that this example uses nice round numbers, but sometimes it can get more complicated. Let's add a limit location constraint to our bone so that we can only move it between minus 1 and 1. In the Bone Constraints tab, add a limit location constraint and enable everything and change the owner to local space. Now just change the minimum x to minus 1 and the maximum x to 1. Now as we move our bone, it will stop moving when it gets to 1 or minus 1. To keep things neat, we can rename our bone to Eye Control by pressing F2. However, now when we move the bone, the shape keys don't work anymore, and that's because we've broken the connection. Back in Object Mode, go to the Driver Editor again, and you'll see that your drivers have red lines underneath them. We can fix this using the Drivers tab on the right. Expand the tab, and we can see our error. Blender uses paths to reference things, so now it's looking for the location of a bone called Bone. So we can fix this by changing Bone to Eye Control. Do this for both of them, and now your shape keys should work again. It's important to know how and why your drivers might break and how to fix them, and if something is acting weirdly, check the path that Blender is looking for to make sure that it's correct. That was a lot of explaining, but the next bone should be quicker. With the rig selected in Edit Mode, duplicate the eye bone, move it up, and rename it to Nose Control with F2. In Pose Mode, right-click the X location, copy it as a driver, then paste it into both of your nose shape keys. In the Driver Editor, change the top point of the Nose Small shape key to have a value of minus 1 instead of 1. Now if you move your Nose Bone, the Nose will scale, and because we duplicated the bone, it also has the location constraint. Now just repeat the same process for the Mouth and Ear Bones. The only difference with the ear is that it won't have a smaller value, so instead of the first point being 0, 0, we can change it to minus 1, 0, which means that when we move the bone all the way to the left, it will turn off the shape key entirely. The best way to figure out all of these shape keys is to talk through it or even just write it down. You just need to ask yourself, at what value do I want my shape key to be 0, and at what value do I want my shape key to be 1? So now in pose mode, you should be able to move all of the bones to create your own custom version of Suzanne, but we can make the rig a bit nicer by using our own custom shapes instead of the default bone shape. In pose mode, in the bone properties, we can go to viewport display and see some options to help clean up the rig. First of all, we can change the color of the bones using the bone color options, but the main thing we want is the custom shape section. At the moment, it's all grayed out because we haven't chosen a custom shape, so we need to make one. We want these to be sliders, so let's just start off with the circle. Back in object mode, add a new circle and rename it UI Circle. I like putting UI at the start of all my custom bone shapes so that I can search for them easier. When it comes to custom shapes, it's best practice to have them rotated so they're flat like this, as then we don't have to play with any rotation settings in the bone properties. Now back in pose mode, go to the custom shape section again and assign the UI Circle to the bone. You can do this for all four bones to see how it looks. Obviously the circles are way too big, and there's two ways to change it. We can change the scale in the custom shape settings, but we would have to do that for each bone and make sure that the values are the same, or we can actually just modify our circle mesh, which will affect all of them at once. Leave pose mode, select your circle object, and enter edit mode, and scale down the circle. Make sure to enter edit mode, as just changing the scale of the object won't work. You should see all of your sliders change size in real time, so you can adjust the size as much as you like. I'm going to use something like this, but now our bones, the circles, are spaced very far apart, but we can change this easily in edit mode. All you have to do is drag all of the bones down until they're closer together. If you want to be precise about their placement, you can input their values in the Transform tab on the right. For something like a slider, it's nice to keep everything evenly placed, so all of the bones are placed at 0.5 intervals, and then if we go back to pose mode, we can see all of our circles are positioned nicely. Lastly, we want to add some kind of menu with labels to our rig, and again, we can do this using our custom shapes, but we need one more bone. In edit mode, duplicate the bottom bone and press F2 and rename it Menu. We want to leave it in the same position, as that will make the modeling easier. We can hide Suzanne for the minute, and now we need to make our menu shape, and we can do this by duplicating our UI circle and modifying it. You can rename it UI Menu and now enter edit mode. First of all, let's make it a little bit bigger than our circle by scaling it up. Now all we need to do is select the top and bottom vertices and press Ctrl Shift B to bevel the vertices so that we have two at the top and two at the bottom. Now we can just select either side and drag it to the left and right. Just get them roughly in place because we don't know exactly how far to move them yet. The way to figure this out is by going back to the rig and assign the menu shape to the menu bone. And now if we move our bones to the left and right, we can see exactly how big the menu needs to be. 
I'm going to move one bone all the way to the left and another all the way to the right so I can see the two extremes. I want to keep this view active so that we can see what the rig looks like, so I'm going to split the viewport in half so that I can modify the shapes and still see the rig. Back in edit mode for our menu shape, we can move the left side until it lines up with the circle, then we can duplicate the bar, move it up on the y-axis to create our second bar, now we can move all of the right vertices into place. Then just duplicate the two bars to complete the menu. Now we just need to add our text, so I'm going to add some text objects. In the text properties, we can change the fill type to none, and this will just give us the outline of the text. You can fill in all of your UI objects if you like, instead of just using the outlines, but I found that occasionally they render weirdly, so I like leaving them as outlines to start off with, and if we need to, we can fill them in later. Enter your text, scale it, and move it into place, and now all we have to do is right-click on the text and convert it to a mesh. Now we can join it with our menu object with Ctrl J, and immediately you'll see the rig update. Now just do the same process for the other text objects, and our rig is done. If you want, you can parent all of the bones to the menu bone, and this will allow you to move your menu around, and all of the sliders will follow it. It's not entirely necessary, it just makes things more organized. Feel free to play around with the bone shapes and even the shape keys to have as many customization options as you want. And remember, the bone shapes don't always have to be a menu like this. You can have something more freeform, where the custom shapes themselves have shape keys that change as the bones move. So as well as controlling the shape of the mesh, they're also controlling the shape of the custom shapes. If you want a quick way of applying all the shape keys so that you can do some further editing or maybe sculpting, you can remove any modifiers, then just right-click and convert to mesh. This will apply all of the shape keys for you, and then you can add back your modifiers and start making more changes. Using drivers and shape keys in combination with using a traditional rig is probably the best approach. Use shape keys for more linear movement and use traditional rigging for rotating parts like the ears, and this will give you so much flexibility when it comes to characters, prop design, or even animations. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.